Hello and welcome. My name is Leah Kopke. I'm a 3D motion design freelancer and this is my podcast, Ambient 3D Animations. Today we are going to go over the min and max substeps for Pyro within Cinema 4D for both the scene object and you can find this in your project settings. So let's go ahead and talk about this. So here I have this scene and I've set up two simulations here. I'm going to go ahead and press play and you can take a look at what's happening. And these fires look pretty different. So this is actually running slower than real time because it's running calculations for these two fires. But you can see how the form is pretty different for these two. And I have both of these simulations. I'm using the same size cube for both of these. And I have a pyro emitter tag added to both of these. Now these pyro emitter tags, you can add to your scene by right clicking, going under simulation tags and adding in a pyro emitter tag. Both of these are set to the default settings. I have not adjusted these. And I, when you add in a pyro emitter tag, it automatically adds in a pyro output. The only change that I've made between the two of these is that I'm using a simulation scene to control the settings here for the simulation. And under the pyro tab, I have changed this to have different numbers of substeps. So this first cube here, I'm using the simulation scene one. So this is simulation scene one, and I'm using these settings here. And this has a minimum substeps of eight and a maximum substeps of 32. And this is on the right side. So. What I might do is I'll name this cube emitter 2 R more substeps so that it's easy for us to remember. And then here on the left, I have zero min substeps and zero max substeps. So this is at the default. And by the way, you can add in a simulation scene under your simulate menu. If you're interested in learning what a simulation scene is, I'll leave a link to that episode in the description. So you can find it there if you want to know more about it, but I've already covered that, so I'm not doing that now. And the sub steps are how many calculations are being done for the accuracy of the fire per frame and it's actually a range. So depending on how fast this cube is going, Cinema 4D might feel like we need more substeps or less substeps. So you could see these cubes are animated to make the effect of the substeps more obvious. You can see that the fire that looks more detailed and more interesting here, that one has more substeps. More calculations are being done per frame for the pyro emitter. And that's why it looks better. It looks more accurate. It looks more real than this other one over here that has fewer substeps because the difference is more noticeable when objects are moving. It's a little bit more obvious. Greater substeps make it look more realistic. So when we have a range of eight minimum substeps and 32 greater substeps, that means that when this object is still and it's not moving as much, it will have a minimum of eight substeps per frame. The max substeps is 32, so maybe when it's moving really fast, it'll reach that max of 32. So if you want to have a really realistic looking fire, and this fire is going to be animated, the emitter is going to be animated or something like that. It, it really helps to bump up the substeps a little bit and you'll just end up with a more realistic looking fire. So that's important to recognize.
Next time, we're going to cover what this expected advict distance in voxels means. So if you're interested in learning more about that, that's what we're covering next time. I hope you found this helpful. And if you're interested in learning more of the Pyro settings inside of Cinema 4D, please hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you'll be notified when the next episode comes out. If you're interested in learning 3D modeling, I've covered all of the mesh modeling tools and you can find them in another playlist if you're interested in that. And I hope to see you here next time on Ambient 3D Animations.